This strategy just made me $17,000 in 40 minutes. If you want to get good at scalping and making consistent profits, I'm giving you your best chance. I'm giving you everything I did to make sure you can replicate this just as easy as me. Subscribe! Scalping the market is by far the hardest trading style to do. You have to be so precise in such a small amount of time and make sure you are getting in and out very quickly. You have everything against you. I'm getting in and out of trades in second. Like, look at these trades. It's actually insane. Watching this is not just going to make you profitable or make you have some eureka moment. If I'm doing something I found success with, I just want to make sure I'm giving it to you. So potentially you could. If not, just move on. I'm going to try and make this as enjoyable as possible because trading content is so boring. I'm going to put you on. You're going to make some money and you're going to subscribe because it's the least you could do. Now, to someone just seeing this, you would kind of think that I'm just a crazy scalper and I do this every single day. Not really. I cannot tell you the last time I took nine trades within the same hour. And that's the thing. You have to be able to pivot off of other strategies because I trade so many different ways, but I need to make sure if I'm trading with a certain style that all my rules, all my ideas, as they transfer over to just this. I can't have anything on the outside telling me what to do because it's not how I'm trading. You got to be able to switch like this. There's going to be a more in-depth documented version inside of my discord. There's a free section with a bunch of information. So if you like these styles, these strategies, everything involved with this, you need to check it out. This is the problem with people trying to take this strategy seriously. You don't understand the concept of multi-level time frame trading. Multi-level time frame trading is the ability to change your complete outlook and replicate it towards a certain time frame. This means that you are taking another strategy that you have and you might want to incorporate it into this style and it's going to affect you basically you can't go on the daily time frame find a setup switch to the one minute and try and trade off of it because you're not going to see the same setup each of those candles took a day to form and you're trying to catch it on the one minute so if i'm trading on the 15 second time frame i need to crunch everything down as much as possible because all my setups all my trades everything is going to be the smallest dot on a single chart. But for me, they can have a huge impact. Being able to trade on the 15 second time frame is very advanced. The average person could not do this. And that doesn't mean I'm Superman, but that means you need to have some things in place before you can do that. And that's why you're here. Before I talk about finding and taking trades, we need to talk about the chart itself. People like to rely on indicators and other things to put on their chart to give them some sort of bias. And I do too. But when you're trading on this small of a time frame, you need to understand that those indicators are not going to have an impact. You're going to be subject to a lot of mishaps when you're looking at this time frame because of how quickly things can change. The only indicator I use at all is the 8 EMA and I really don't even trade off of it. It just gives me an idea of understanding how the trend is looking. You cannot rely on any indicators, any outside things other than just candles. Just because you're not going to see reactions on this small of a time frame, just because of how much price is moving. Trading this way is going to give you a great way to manage your risk and also still see good rewards. Being able to take multiple shots at a setup with still risking a small amount and targeting big moves. This is all going to rely on your discipline. I'm telling you, you have to be so dialed in to do this. Price action is the only thing you can trade on this time frame because it is so fast moving. Now let's talk about me targeting setups. I can take 20 26,000 trades in one day on this time frame. So it's very important you find setups you like and you manage it correctly. So let's really try and filter everything out we can to give us the best potential to still take a nice amount of trades, but obviously don't overdo it so we don't take stupid trades. The two most important things you need to know how to do is set up supply and demand levels and understand how candlesticks are created. If you need help with that, I have other videos and also a lot of documents inside my Discord you can check out for free. These supply and demand levels can be anything you would like if you're trading order blocks, fair value gaps, price levels, key levels, anything you want. The main thing I want you to do with these levels is make sure you have an understanding of key areas in price because you might not even trade off them, but it's so important you see them so you can avoid them. And the other thing is candlestick wicks. And we're going to get into it a lot deeper in a second because this is the most important thing you're going to learn today. You have to make sure you can understand candlestick wicks how they're created and moves that can be expected off of certain wicks. Quickly, let's talk about news. Don't fucking look at news. Don't talk about news. Don't trade through news. Okay, I kind of take that back. The only reason why I'm mentioning news is because you need to at least know about it. Every day, check the economic calendar and make sure you're seeing news reports come out. These news reports can emphasize a certain move in the market and maybe give you confidence to catch a little bit of bread off of it. For example, if Jeff Bezos came out and said he sold all of his stock in Amazon and he believes that it's going to keep dropping, that's probably going to have a huge effect on the market and you need to at least be aware of it. That would give me a lot of confidence to take shorts and expect a move down in the market just because of the impact that could that could have. Now, while I was taking trades on the 15 second, I was using the 30 second to chart out my zones. I trade supply and demand, so that's pretty broad. I like to look at everything from order blocks, fair value gaps, key levels, price levels, all that shit. So when I'm charting, I actually use the 30 second because the 30 second kind of gives me the same exact outlook. It's a very short time frame that moves fast. 
but I can see price moving a little bit better and these wicks are a lot easier to mark out. It's important you don't use like the two minute or five minute, maybe the one minute could work for you, but you have to stay on these short time frames because these zones might get too big and you're gonna have a huge stop loss and it's gonna be very hard for you to manage risk correctly. So I'm looking at the 30 second, I'm finding order blocks, I'm finding fair value gaps, I'm finding key levels, price levels, anything that I can use to mark out a zone. After that, I will color code my zones to make sure that I know exactly what I'm seeing because when the chart is moving in the future, I might not be able to see the beginning of this zone that was created. I can make fair value gap zones yellow, I could make order block zones blue, I could just make key price levels red. That gives me an idea of, okay, should I trade off of this or should I just be aware of this? Because it's very important to tell the difference. But majority of the trades I took actually didn't include any zones. That just goes to show you if you can just play around them, it can still benefit you a lot. With no indicators and nothing on your chart looking extremely plain, it can be scary. So making these zones, marking them out, showing them can give you a lot more confidence and be a lot more aware of where price could potentially move. So you can still be confident taking your trades. This is the most important part of this video. Video, trading off of candlesticks. I've been very bullish on you guys learning about trading price action because price action is just the chart. That's all you have. And it's going to help you be a lot more self-confident taking your trades, be more independent. Price action is important in any strategy, no matter what you do. So if you do learn how to do that, you always have a pretty decent foot in the door. Let's take a look at these two trades. I took both these trades back to back and that's just showing you that I'm working with the chart. I'm working with what it's given me and price action was moving so good this day. Using wicks on these time frames is so important because that's going to be really the only way you're able to manage your risk correctly. Understanding bearish and bullish wicks can help you make a lot of money, especially on these smaller time frames because of how recent they just happened there's probably an impact back at the same level you can see in the first trade i was taking a trade off of that previous wick that we just rejected off of after having a huge fall off price tried to buy back up and got sold back off so initially i jumped right in stop loss above that wick the reason why i didn't just have a stop loss at that wick which still would have turned out successful was just because of how small it was i think it was like a four point sl and usually i like to run 10 points minimum so i ran the 10 point sl just because i'm okay with losing that i'll always set a 10 point sl majority of the time but if there is a situation where the wick is bigger than that, I usually will wait for it to climb back up. But as you can see, price rejected off of that, I jumped in right away, stop loss at 10 points above that wick, and we dropped off. We're gonna get into sizing later, but I usually will never take more than 20 points on these trades. At that point, you're just getting greedy. If there's a wick that's more than 10 points, I will usually just wait for it to get to the point where I can take a 10 point loss on it. And if it doesn't, I'll just move on. This is a great example of how that works because it happened literally 30 seconds later. Right after I exited that position, we tried to buy back up again and we dropped off. You can obviously tell there is a very strong bearish sentiment in the market. We finally made a bottom and bought back up and I decided to take a trade off of that previous wick right there. Remember what I said, I usually will wait for the candle to climb to a point where I can take a 10 point loss off of a wick and that's exactly what I did right here. And we caught a perfect entry again. Price rejects back down another 20 point we get in, we get out, and we move on. Let's look at two examples where I got stopped out. I cannot emphasize enough being able to jump out of a trade without a doubt. You have to have the mentality of get in, get out every single time, regardless if it's a win or a lose, or else you're going to get waxed. The number one thing with this strategy is to make sure you're exiting with a small loss. These two trades are small losses. You see, I lost 10 points on each of these, which means one of my winning trades makes up for two losses. These are two scenarios where the wicks were too small, so my SL was more than the wicks and it was just 10 points again but still very small losses and you can see this first trade i actually would have caught a huge dub on but we got liquidity swept on us which you know on the 15 second time frame it's gonna happen another really important thing when you're trading with such short time frames is you have to just play with the trend and hope that it continues because you have to play with where the money's coming in you can see that i took zero trades off of any zones today it was solely just candle wicks and there's nothing wrong with that i just want you to be versed in both of them so you can trade off of both of them because sometimes there's going to be one not the other and you're going to be stuck these wicks and these zones are your indicators in your trades instead of adding indicators or adding outside things you get to build them yourself and make sure you have the ability to create them because that's going to give you so much more confidence is you making them yourself. We talked about risk reward, but I wanna clarify this one more time. I will rarely have a 15 point SL, but I'm usually running 10 on this small of a time frame because things move fast. By that point, there's really not a scenario where I've back tested that if you're gonna be down 10 or 15 points, it's gonna come back and you're gonna hit TP. Doing this is gonna keep your losses small, your wins are gonna be bigger, and you're gonna be able to see consistent profit if you do this correctly. I ended up going seven and two this day as well, which you know I, I was banking crazy. Those were actually my only two losses this day. And remember, 
about the position size, I took seven wins and two losses. Those seven wins were all over 15 to 20 points, and those two losses were 10 points. So you can understand the points and the point profit I'm coming in on. But do you notice how all of my trades are the same? They all look the exact same. They all have the same risk reward, and they're all off the same exact thing. I cannot emphasize getting the you know hype out of your brain. The hype of you being up a certain amount of money or your account's at a certain point, and you're just, you want to take a screenshot and all this shit. You have to take that out of your brain. Having the same exact trade every single time is going to take that away because it's just another trade. You can get as excited as you want and hype as you want after the trade is over let's talk about knowing when to stop remember i said i could take 26,000 trades a day doing this and i'm sure you could too this is another example of two more trades i took today and i want you to again look at what i'm taking these trades off of i know you could take 20,000 trades and I, I know you have the potential to make 50 million dollars a day it's so important you're just taking the a plus setup how you're going to know if it's an a plus setup is if you're doing what i just told you to do today this one was actually off one of these zones i created off of a previous wick you see that massive buying wick that level we made and ended up pushing off of price ended up coming back down breaking below it and i took a trade right off of it and i caught a huge move this was another scenario where the wick was too small for 10 points so i made it a 10 point sl above the zone and i still made so much money if you can incorporate these wicks just like i'm doing right now this is something you can see very often during the day but also to a number amount that is not a huge number so you're able to take these trades, you're able to take these managed risks, and you know, you'll see about six, seven of these a day and you'll be just fine. I want you to be able to take a loss and be like, okay, this was worth it. If you cannot do that when you're taking a trade, post-trade clarity, I don't want you to take it. This first trade was an A plus setup. Look at the next trade. When we made a new low, we broke it, I ended up retesting that level, and I took another short off of that wick again and caught more points. I would recommend setting up a time frame of the day that you're trading. I usually trade from 9.30 to 11. Let's talk about a losing day though. Something simple you could do is when you take three losses in a row, you stop trading. Remember the discipline you have to have to do this is so hard because of the amount of trades you can take in a day. You need to be able to close your chart, move on with your day. If you can't do that, this is not gonna work for you. Contract scaling on this is something very important. People that are on, let's say 50K funded accounts or 100K funded accounts, I would really recommend not going over three minis ever. I would honestly suggest two max because of how fast this moves and the amount of trades you could take in a day, you don't have to have a big position size because of that. You're able to take nine trades in the day with a smaller position size, you're still gonna have a huge net profit if you're up on the day. But in the beginning, I would really suggest you stay under two minis just because of the amount of trades you're going to take. But down the line, remember, as you get better at this, as you get more comfortable, you can obviously size that up three, four minis. Doing this on a random Thursday made me $17,000 in 40 minutes. This isn't super complicated. This isn't some groundbreaking stuff. Follow these rules, stick to your plan, take A plus setups, and you're gonna be green, I promise you. Subscribe because I'm probably uploading the best video I've ever uploaded this week. I paid somebody to edit it, bro, so it's gonna look fire. Outside of trading, I hope you're doing good. I hope your family's well. I hope your life is going all right. Regardless of where you're at right now, life is going to get so much better. Most YouTube videos aren't gonna help you with your future. Just watching these videos and getting comfortable with trading is gonna set you up with something that you can change your life with. Subscribe.